G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Well, we're going to have a look at Pookie. So there's a Pookie alert coming for those of you with headphones. Just watch out for that voice. It looks like he might be halfway on his way to becoming a Glober. He's got a lot of things right for once. A few things wrong and we'll point them out along the way, but well, let's get this on the road, folks. Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. Okay, let's count how many things Nick gets right and how many things he gets wrong. And first one I want to nominate is where he says right at the beginning, welcome. Because he doesn't welcome everyone because we all know he likes to block people. But just to prove the point, if you feel like making a comment, how about you say whether you're blocked or not as well. I just would like to know how many people has Nick blocked. In this brief presentation... Oh, so close, but no, that's totally wrong, Nick. We're going to look at four issues related to flat earth maps and projections. So here we have an azimuthal equidistant and it's centered on what's assumed to be the North Pole. So this does work as a projection. Oh Nick, I think you'll find that the um, azimuthal equidistance only is right while you're right at the North Pole. The further you get away from the North Pole, even in the Northern Hemisphere, it's getting more and more incorrect. And that's simply because the same center point is used for the projection. And it is the same center point that's used to uh, have the time zones for the Earth, as well as the longitude and latitude lines that are north of the equator. Well, that sounds right, Nick. The problem is when using this particular projection is, of course, the distortion that you get of the land masses that are beyond the equator, such as this very elongated Australia. Well, that sounds right, Nick. Which also puts it very, very far, apparently, from uh, South America. Well, that sounds right, Nick. And we can also be led to erroneously believe that we then have an ice wall surrounding all these continents. No ice wall. Well, that's good. Good to hear a uh, fatty saying there's no ice wall. That's correct. And it just distorts everything and we get the continent of Antarctica distorted to this extent that it then creates this apparent ice wall. Well, that sounds right, Nick. So it doesn't mean that an ice wall actually exists. So it is a shame that uh, this has been uh, used and widely uh, become synonymous or symbolic of flat earth or some kind of perceived flat earth movement, uh, which of course does then give it this cult-like status. Well, that sounds right, Nick. And easily debunked uh, by those who are a bit more familiar familiar with the way that maps work. Well, that sounds right, Nick. Here we've got the Gleason's map. Which, and again, it works because it does do what it says it does, and that is to represent longitude and time. Well, that sounds right, Nick. The longitude, latitude lines and uh, the time lines or date line these are all political things. It doesn't truly represent what's actually happening. Oh, so close, but no, that's totally wrong, Nick. Works in as far as uh, communication and navigation, because of course it is important to have some kind of centralized timekeeping system or navigation coordinates. Well, that sounds right, Nick. This projection does not dictate the actual shape of the Earth. Well, that sounds right, Nick. Whatever kind of projection you wish to use, you are going to encounter distortion of the land masses and the apparent distances between those land masses. Well, that sounds right, Nick. These longitude, latitude lines and timelines, etc., are imaginary lines that are superimposed well, that sounds right, Nick. But we still have uh, an issue here with this vast distance between uh, Eastern Australia, for example, and uh, South America, Chile and Argentina. Well, that sounds right, Nick. Now, uh, this is a bone of contention 
when it comes to flight plans. Here we have a flight between uh, Australia and Chile and would appear to exist, I think. Oh, so close, but no, that's totally wrong, Nick. Uh, the flight is a single flight that takes about 14 hours. And of course, you're crossing uh, vast amounts of uh, ocean here. So people will say, this isn't possible on the flat Earth. Well, that sounds right, Nick. Uh, here we have an azimuthal map anywhere projection. This is a really handy little tool to, to help see how projections actually work. It's on uh, a website called maps.ontarget.cc and we can start moving things around and we'll see that as we move around then of course we end up with everything else being uh, distorted. So now we've changed this central projection to the South Pole or Antarctica, assuming that Antarctica is a continent. Oh, so close, but no, that's totally wrong, Nick. In this map, we have a North Pole, which is which does have land mass, referred to as Hyperborea. And there are old accounts of people visiting these areas. So whether or not this exists now is unknown because no one ever goes to the North Pole. It is uh, a point of inaccessibility. Oh, so close, but no, that's totally wrong, Nick. Uh, it's just assumed to be water at the moment. Oh, so close, but no, that's totally wrong, Nick. Around the, the outside here, we have all these other uh, land masses represented which may or may not have existed, may or may not exist currently. Who knows? Oh, so close, but no, that's totally wrong, Nick. Uh, some very straight lines that go from various locations, but then some others which appear to follow what's often referred to as the Great Circle route. Uh, but, uh, you know, nothing actually really crosses the North Pole. Oh, Nick, it sounds like you're saying that no flights go over the North Pole at all. But if you have a look on the um, Flight Aware Arian data, yes, there are flights going over the pole. They are tracked and they go over there quite a lot. Look at all those little lines up there. Heaps of them, mate. Heaps. Um, what I've done with this one is to change the projection to a, an, a, a the centre point as Antarctica. And we can see from this that... Uh, you know, the flights are not uh, crossing over. So in this sense, could we assume that actually Antarctica does exist as a continent? Oh, so close, but no, that's totally wrong, Nick. The southern flight uh, such as this can work with this projection. What I did was just take a, a screenshot of what we were looking at just now. When we do it with this azimuthal equidistant projection from the South Pole, we can see that we get a straight line. The lines that we will get for flight paths will usually be straight. Maybe that a, a flight will fly in a particular direction because it takes advantage of uh, jet streams. So going east to west is often not the same route as going west to east because in, in opposite directions it's easier to follow uh, a longer uh, but quicker route because of the direction of the wind or the jet streams. Well, that sounds right, Nick. So from this Thomas Bradford projection of the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere from uh, the 1830s, I believe, uh, we can see that what we have is this projection from the North Pole and this projection from the South Pole. Oh, this is a different approach. Let's take two of them and put them back to back. Okay, well now we're getting somewhere, Nick. Which together we can create a globe projection. Well, that sounds right, Nick. It is nothing more than representing uh, the land masses from these two different points of projection, both of which are 
a, a mystery really. We don't know how much of Antarctica really exists that we're told about. Oh, so close, but no, that's totally wrong, Nick. Nobody ever crosses over the North Pole in an aircraft or uh, on a boat because it is what's referred to as a pole of inaccessibility. Oh, so close, but no, that's totally wrong, Nick. It is too far beyond uh, the most northern points of those land masses to go and have a point of safe return. Oh, so close, but no, that's totally wrong, Nick. So uh, when it comes to Flat Earth, it is an ongoing investigation. Oh, so close, but no, that's totally wrong, Nick. Exploration needs to be done in all directions to see what is a true representation of this earth. It could be vastly different to any of the projections and ideas we have been given so far. Oh, so close, but no, that's totally wrong, Nick. Thank you very much. So finally, I can see what I need to do to make this right. Now, just check this out, folks, and click and subscribe while I show you exactly the next step that Nick needs to take.